Hi, Dr. Kevin Windish from Sparks Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine again. Welcome to our video series for students and for parents. Remember that these videos were not intended to replace normal clinical education, nor are they intended to replace visits to your physician. We're happy to see you here or have you here for video or for um, rotations, much as the student behind me who or in front of me who's actually running the video camera today. Um, if we can be of assistance, give us a call at 775-359-7111. Uh, please remember, we can't treat you over the internet, so if you have specific questions, we need to see you. With today's video, what I want to talk about is actually some very, very, very basic sciences, but a concept that is lost on a lot of people and definitely makes people's head hurt. And it's a concept that goes back to very basic organic chemistry. So what we want to talk about today are enantiomers and the concept of a chiral center. And what does that mean for us clinically and why we care. So enantiomers, phone always waits till I have a video, enantiomers are non-superimposable mirror images of one another. And as a result of their nature, they rotate light. We really don't care about the light rotation, the aspect of them. But uh, we do care about the fact that they're non-superimposable mirror images. This occurs in, in organic chemistry on a very regular basis. In the biological system, human beings, cells, bacteria, etc., Nature tends to respond to one enantiomer or another, but usually not both. And that, that becomes clinically important to us. So some examples in medicine that are very famous. We give a lot of infusions for IV fluid of something known as dextrose, and everybody kind of doesn't give much thought to that until I ask, ask a, a nurse or a medical student, what is dextrose? I said, I have no idea what dextrose is, doctor. Dextrose is glucose. Well, why don't we call it glucose? Why do I order D5 water instead of G5 water? Because it sounds better, it's easier to write, and the answer is no, because dextrose is D-glucose. And D-glucose is right-handed glucose. Well, what about L-glucose? Does it exist? Well, not in nature. It doesn't exist. Uh, but we can make it in a laboratory. Why do we care? Why not use racemic glucose, a mixture of D and L-glucose? And the answer is very, simil very simple. L-glucose is not absorbable in the gut. It's not metabolizable in the body. It makes you acidotic, whereas D-glucose keeps you alive. Okay, what, what am I talking about? D-glucose, L-glucose, non-superimposable mirror images. Well, that's kind of the whole point of this video is to give you a few uh, examples to look at. So we're going to start with a molecular drawing. So we'll take you back to your organic chemistry textbooks. Okay, so... What we have here are drawings of amino acids okay, with a chiral center. A chiral center is a point where we can have form non-superimposable mirror images. Okay, so we have a carbon center. We have our acetate rings. In this case, the acetate ring is going into the blackboard. In this case, it's coming out, or not ring, but the acetate moiety is going into the blackboard. Here, it's going away from the blackboard towards the camera. We have a methyl group. Here, it's going in, or coming, coming towards the camera. Here, it's coming into the uh, blackboard. We have our hydrogens, and we have our amino groups. Okay. Now, try as you might to rotate these figures around in your head, you'll never be able to superimpose them upon one another. Um, now, a lot of people have difficulty envisioning this. And if you've never actually played with molecular models, you probably will never be able to grasp this. 
uh, just by looking at these drawings because it is very difficult to envision. And I mean, I'll, I'll be the first to admit when I was in organic chemistry, uh, I too had <laughs> extreme difficulty with this concept and it took me a long time to get a handle on it. Some people never get a handle on it. Another example that professors in organic chemistry will often give are your right and left hands minus the ring, which makes my hands not mirror images. So now they're mirror images. I can try to superimpose them all I want. It doesn't work. Okay. Well, now I've got them matched up, except that one's palm up, one's palm down. They're still not the same. I can't get them on top of one another. I'd need to move my thumb over here to make it work. Okay. What about in a molecule, though? Because this, this is a wonderful example, except that these are planar images, not really true 3D images. So I'm going to show you another example. Um, bear with me, because although these are supposed to be tetrahedrons, um, I didn't quite get the angles right. And since I'm not an organic chemist, this is good enough for my, for my purposes. Okay. So, as we look at these molecules, we have the little fluff ball on top coming up. I have the syringe coming towards me. However, the Q-tip and the tongue depressor go in opposite directions. And try as I might to rotate them, I can get the tongue depressor and the uh, syringe to go in the right direction, now the Q-tips are going in the wrong direction. I can never get these to go in the same direction, and yet they are the same general shape. A round ball, each of them have one tongue depressor, one Q-tip, one syringe, and one fluff ball, uh, all plugged into the central core molecule. But you'll never be able to get them together so that they're identical. Close. I can get two out of three lined up sometimes. Okay, so here's another example of positioning. Now I have the Q-tip going the right way, I have the tongue depressor going the right way, um, I have the fluff ball going the right way, except the syringe goes the wrong way. Okay, these are non-superimposable mirror images. A racemic mixture, like racemic epinephrine, has both of these in it. Albuterol is a racemic mixture. It has both molecules. To turn albuterol into um, leave albuterol or L-albuterol, or Zopinex, we get rid of one of the molecules, leaving us with just one. Why do we care? Well, in the case of albuterol, <clears throat> the R molecule that I threw on the floor over there tends to cause bronchoconstriction and mucus production. The L molecule that we kept behind is the one that does all of the work causing bronchodilation and enhanced mucociliary clearance. The R molecule has, I could look up the half-lives uh, from the PDR, but has a half-life of roughly four hours, um, whereas the R molecule has a half-life of roughly a week. A week of sitting around mucking things up, as opposed to four hours of actually dilating the airways. By using the strictly leave molecule, levo molecule, you have longer bronchodilation, you have less muco, muco constriction or muco production and less bronchoconstriction. You also cut the total dose down by quite a bit, so you have less cardiac complications, tachycardia, dysrhythmias, etc. Um, which is the better drug? I'm not here to discuss that. Today we're just talking about chiral centers and enantiomers. Albuterol is a racemic mixture. 
separate the enantiomers to give us Zofenax. I hope this helps to enlighten you as to what this drug is. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, you can't actually pick them out because under a microscope the molecules look identical. Um, and, um, you know, you run them through an uh, NMR spectroscopy device, they're all going to come up with the same NMR spec. The only way you can tell them apart is when you have pure mixtures, one will rotate light to the right, one will rotate right, light to the, the left. And um, that's very difficult. So how do, you, how do you separate them? You don't separate them. Chemical methods will not separate the R and L isomers. You have to use different manufacturing techniques, different synthetic techniques that will alter what happens at that chiral center as you're developing the molecule. So, um, advanced organic chemistry techniques. So they're made differently. Uh, one doesn't pay attention and winds up with a racemic mixture of roughly one to one. The other technique winds up with roughly a, a, a L mixture strictly. Um, and it's a little more complicated to make, but that is the difference. I hope this helps to enlighten you, um, and I wish you best of luck with that. If I can be of any assistance here, my office number is 775-359-7111. This is Dr. Kevin Windish. We'll see you next time.